Long time no see, my name is Dana, if you have forgotten, and I'm going to US Nationals 2023. I'm about to start packing, and my flight is pretty early tomorrow, so I'll take you along for the ride. Editing Dana here. The air conditioning in the background was absurdly loud, and I think it's pretty cool to splice in some voiceover. I wanted to do this with a green screen, but I don't have one. Uh, regardless, in this clip, I'm talking about how my 9.30 flight was canceled. I had to rebook it to a 6 p.m. flight, which meant that I got to the hotel and the venue extremely, extremely late, so I was pretty tired for day one. That being said, for lunch, Starbucks had a 50% off, so I got a coffee and I had a sandwich that was absolutely delicious. After work, I took an Uber to the airport. I got there pretty early because I'm paranoid about missing my flight, so I did have a bunch of time to walk around for a bit, where I encountered perhaps the most broken a water bottle dispenser that I've ever seen. There was a huge line for it because it was dripping extremely, extremely slowly. Look at this. This is ridiculous. So I'm curious what other people think about when a plane is taking off because for me personally, it bounces between two thoughts of this plane is super safe because statistics and stuff. And alternatively, this plane is a flying hunk of metal in the air. And I also recently did watch Manifest, which didn't give me the greatest confidence. So I have this sort of dichotomy every time I fly, even though I've flown many times. Um, and here we are taking off. Woohoo! I never pay for a specific seat, but luckily on this flight, I got a window seat right next to the wing. I think you can get some pretty cool pictures and videos from this angle. So this is the Pittsburgh Air Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Airport. And there's a lot of random stuff like this giant T-Rex. And then I took a bus to the hotel because I did not want to pay for a $50 Uber. Hi, Brandon. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Blake. Where are my limes? Thanks, Who Brandon. Just made Hi. It's for the vlog. She's never going to Oh, right. You vlog. <laughs> Brandon is not wrong. I haven't made a video in quite a while, uh, but after editing this one, I kind of want to make more. So maybe subscribe. <laughs> what you just heard was me promptly dropping all of my stuff. It's like 9, 10. Brandon and Keaton got up at like 7 and then went to the venue at 8. I chose to go back to sleep. So I'm going to get ready and go to the venue and probably get some coffee. Day one. The venue views were actually very nice. It was completely open window, and you could see this lovely bridge from inside. It's very cool. Hi. No, okay, bye. Oh. The setup used rectangular tables, which are more space efficient than these circular ones I usually see at competitions. A shirt. Wow. A shirt. U.S. National Book. Hi, Will. Yeah. Kevin's here. He was there. Are you vlogging? Well, hell, we're In theory, vlogging. yes. <laughs> And one reason I love big competitions is I get to meet up with friends that I don't get to see often. So here I'm sitting with Julie, Elise, and Sam. And it's just so much fun getting to see friends you don't see often because they live all around the country. And then I did my first event, which was Clock. And we ran into Kenny, aka Ken the Cuber. Brandon changed his shirt. And it's the same one that I'm wearing. And you guys also We're have just, the same yellow it's shirt. It's twin day today. <laughs> <laughs> and this is me in my staff shirt after I found some coffee. What did you get from Starbucks? Um, I got a salted caramel cold brew cold foam. That's so much. Yep. How's your first event that you're not doing? Um, I'm planning on just not showing up. I'm no showing on it. That's it. That's it. The coin foam. Hey. What are we doing? Mega Mix. So I think it's really cool they have the overhead. This was the line for lunch and then me getting my lunch. But there was a very awesome stream set up. I was one of the commentators, hence the staff shirt. And they had a very awesome front angle and top down view, which is really important for some events like big cubes where sometimes people hold it behind the table. Uh, so that was really cool. I think the stream overall was really, really good. No bias. And here I snuck a peek. Sneak? Sneak? Sneak to peek at at least doing seven by seven. You can you can go again. Wow. Well, it's impressive. Oh, oh. He totally caught that one. We're dropping off our stuff in the hotel and then gonna go to dinner. Yes, we're gonna go to Fermenti Bros. Yeah. Keaton was Super like, fun. it's a fifteen minute walk, and my backpack is too heavy. See you at dinner. This is the walkway to the hotel. This looks like an airport hangar. Oh, it's like is you're this walking like, space? through immigration. Like you're walking to immigration, you're like separated like with glass walls on yeah. the side. Like it's also one. so humid in here. There's no air. So this is called They're go. practicing for a team blind. This is go? No, 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 no. Uh, Clearly it was going well. Left and uh, inverse double sexy. No. <laughs> Two hours later. Uh, why can I need to use for Why? Uh, Spin left. YouTube, Z burn, we're done.
Must do. <laughs> if you cannot tell, this is not Permanti Bros. The line was very, very long. So we went to a Venezuelan restaurant called Ar Arapitas. I am definitely mispronouncing that. But the food was great. And I got, uh, I forget the name of this, but it's basically a flan for dessert. First 3 by 3 world record was a min. Oh, is this gonna go like, honestly, like, that's honestly, I'm gonna record this, like, just in case something happens. For the record, this is non-alcoholic malt beverage. People are throwing fire. We are going to Team Blind. Hello. If you don't know, Team Blind is an unofficial event where there are two people, one person is blindfolded and cannot see the cube, obviously, because they're blindfolded, and the other person can see the cube, but they cannot touch the cube. And then their goal is to have the person who can see the cube tell the person who cannot see the cube what to do and how to solve it. And there are lots of ways and tricks and terminology and shortcuts you can use for this. So this is their first attempt. And this event is actually very interesting. There are lots of ways to optimize. This is the winning team where Tommy Cherry is the solver and Calyx Tang is the caller. And the way that they're doing it is Calyx is calling out what would be the blind memorization to Tommy. And Tommy is executing it as if it were a blind solve. And being that he is the world record blindfolded solver, this is obviously very fast. <laughs> and this is the end of a team blind solve for a much slower team. And this is the second place team, Ava and Patrick. On day two, I figured out how to use the walkway to get to the venue. Woke up a little bit late because uh, I had a cold, but I'm headed to the convention center now. I hear it's a little bit warm, so that's not great. Ready for day two. Luckily, the yellow bridge was still there outside the venue, and this was the day that the cubicle started vending at the competition, so there was a huge line to look at the stuff that they were selling, which is pretty cool. Team chat, we've got, oh my goodness, we've got Dana vlogging me right now. We've got another video telling us what is going to be the next, uh, the next scene that we're going to have. We've got 12,000 cameras that are all very professionally set up. We've got name, name tags, we've got instant replay, we've got facts about every single competitor that are, that are coming out. I just got a five. That's a PB. That's so random. Julie's first ever 6x6 six six song. <laughs> God help me. Fun fact, I'm five feet and Kenny's way taller than that, so that was funny. And then we went to play mini golf. I am no golf aficionado, but I'm going to attempt to commentate this like some fancy game. So we have Julie here on her first shot, and wham bams it into the Tetris block and ends up just about where she started. On her second shot, she manages to get past the difficult moving block, and on her third shot, which looks like it's going in, gets stopped just short. And she takes a fourth little step just to hit it in. I thought this mini golf place was really cool. I think Julie recommended it to us, but the balls were associated with each player. So when you place yours down on the starting block, it would register and there must be uh, some sort of motion sensor inside because every time you hit it, it would register and then tell you how many hits it took you to get into the hole, which is personally, I think a lot cooler than having to keep track of it yourself. So here's Kevin getting his first shot in. Nice. 
Sam's first shot goes about as well as Julie's, which is to say, not very well. We're ending up right about where we started. Oh! I would like to point out that this golf stick is way too long for me. They did have like shorter ones for kids, but I guess because I'm old, they gave me a full-sized one. So I was figuring out how to hold it, and I also have no idea how to play golf or like swing and stuff properly. <laughs> and then I waddled away. Kenan's first shot went pretty well. His first shot ended up close to the hole, unlike uh, some people, and was able to get a hole nice. in two. Very nice. Kenny goes for the swing. It ends up somewhere in middle field. And, ah, uh, misses the putt, I think it's called when you try to get it close, but able, is able to get it in three, which is maybe called a par? I'm not quite sure. I'm not going to show everyone taking all of their shots for the rest of the holes, because that would take forever, but I thought each one of the holes was very cleverly designed, and you could get extra points or lose the points for hitting it in specific places or doing specific things, which I thought this was cool. So on this one, you have to hit it and stop the spinner, and you get extra points if you get it in a hole in one after the spinner. Uh, which, unfortunately, Julie was not able to do. <laughs> this one is, I guess, pinball golf, where you can get extra points or lose points if you get it into one of the pockets or bounce it off one of the bumpers, which I thought was pretty cool. I would also like to point out that we all stand differently. For example, Julie stands with her feet together when she hits, which I don't nice. think you're supposed to do. This one is like Connect 4 and Sam gets it into the little green hole, which I think they call a super tube and gives you extra bonus points. This one is hard because there's a curvature to the top and the green thing gives you extra bonus points, but the two red things lose points and Julie clocks it in the left one. As Sam manages this incredible shot, like, oh my god, look at that. What? How did she do that? Kevin definitely got duped on this one. He was so close and misses. And this is me being an absolute idiot, missing a very easy hole in two. This one is like air hockey, so you have to time your shot properly. And Kevin hits it a little too hard, just bounces right over the hole. And Ken does an interesting shot there. For this one, they show you a true or false question, and you have to hit the ball into the section that you think has the right answer. And I think everybody got this one wrong except for me, so clearly that just means I'm a genius. As a side tangent, I love trivia, and I want to do more trivia now after this. I actually did know the answer to Julie's true-false question, and the only reason I know that is because I saw a TikTok that was talking about how Taylor Swift wears red bottom Lubu tans on tour, which is pretty funny. For this one, as printed in very large letters, is beer pong, and it's extra points if you get it in the green cup, which I tried to do and failed miserably. In my defense, I didn't do as badly as Kevin did, and Julie managed to get the super tube slash bonus points, so this was a really cool shot. For the ninth and final hole, you just hit one shot, and you get the number of points based on where it lands, so sort of like pinball. And I would just like to say that I was completely gypped by this, I think I should have gotten the green points. But physics, I guess. And then we went to dinner. Caesar. Caesar. <laughs> Appetizers for the table. These are huge. That's they look so good, though. Kenan got cod. Julie and I got lobster rolls. Kenny got wings. And Kevin got the biggest pot of mussels I've ever seen in my life. On the way back to the hotel, it was going to rain soon. So we started talking about speed walking, <laughs> Olympic speed walking. And then Kevin goes and shows us how it's done. And Julie tries to imitate. And good thing we did all that speed walking because literally the second we got back to the hotel, it started absolutely pouring outside and none of us had umbrellas because we didn't check the weather beforehand. So good timing. Oh gosh, Dana's recording me as I'm recording this to you, honey. Um, we both already seen one song from Michael. And if you're just tuning in, uh, welcome to day three of Cuban USA Nationals 2023. I guess we're gonna cut the Brennan Lynn. Yeah. There's no space. <laughs> day three is the first day of 3x3, three three, so there are a lot more people, and even though there are so many tables, uh, some of my friends had to sit under the stairs, so significantly more people than the prior days. And for this picture, there were probably about the same number of people taking pictures as there were in the picture. So apparently the only event that I recorded was 3x3. Three three. This is the first round. I got a 7-4 average, which is actually pretty good for me. And I think that's because this event was right after lunch. So I just eaten. I was pretty warm for the day. Um, and I compete better when I'm warmed up and full. 
anyway, this is the second solve. You can see the stream set up in the background. It's actually pretty small, but I think it was very thorough and extensive. That was not two of the same words. But for the third solve, I was solving on the red stage, as you can see. So the tablecloths were red, the scorecards were red, and there was a lot of chairs and stuff for competitors to wait at. And that was not the best timer stop. Anyway, here is the fourth solve. Do, do, do. Very poor oil execution, which I'm not happy about, even though the time was good. For the last solve, I think I similarly have a pretty good F2L, and then uh, OK OLL, and pretty poor PLL execution, but still counting 6 eight. So that was a pretty good average for me. I think my PB is around 7-3. And then I participated in a Soup Timmy video where he gave me flags on a cube and made me guess them. And after a few pretty easy ones, he gave me this, which uh, after much realization is not a real country flag. Although I said Red Cross, which I think is pretty accurate. For a dollar, what country flag is this? The Swiss? Not Japan. <laughs> I started recording the one I don't know. <laughs> not Switzerland? The Red Cross? <laughs> In conclusion, it was not a real flag. It was not. <laughs> what do I win? You still won three dollars. Yes! Hey. I'm rich! I'm rich! And then I accidentally walked out to this balcony over the venue, and you can see how many people there are. And uh, hey, there's Keaton on stream on red for 3x3, three three, I think, on not a great solve. <laughs> and then the cloud, the cloud, the sky was very cloudy and rainy outside, a little bit sad, but we're recording a video for Livia here. And we got a picture together. Cute! And then we watched some competitors. I managed to catch Ava here, and you can see from this angle the top-down GoPro that was used on stream. Also, there's a microphone at the station so you could hear what the judging competitors were talking about, which I thought was pretty funny. The crowd for Max was absolutely insane. They had to do crowd control because everyone was trying to watch him solve. And then we all went to support Julie in doing 2x2. Two two. Nice! After the comp on day 3, we, being Sean, Kennan, and myself, went to a climbing gym nearby. It's called Iron City Boulders. I found it online and it was absolutely huge. Since the end of last year, climbing has been my new obsession. And I live in New York City, so all of my gyms are pretty small. So this was really, really nice to see. And this was Kennan's first time climbing, so I was actually very impressed. For those unfamiliar with climbing, you start with your hands on the starting tags and you finish it by getting two hands on the top hold and you can use the same color holds to get up. You can also use any part of the wall, but you can't use other color holds. We found this one section of wall that only had one problem on it that looked really interesting, so Sean gave it a go. Also, a side note, Sean is very tall and I'm very short, so we climb the same things completely differently, which I think is very interesting. Uh, anyway, this this was a very cool one. I think there's a, supposed to be a big jump in the middle. Sean was actually able to get this jump, which is really cool. That looks so powerful. Uh, but none of us were able to do the whole route together. And I tried to do this pretty easy route as a warm-up, and then I realized I don't have abs. So I was struggling to get my foot up. Here's a nice little V2. And my approach to climbing is that I like breadth over depth. So I like to try basically every problem within my skill range instead of focusing on a couple to try and get. I don't know if that's better, but I think it's more fun for me, and if it's more fun, it gets me coming back. I like these holds because they look like lily pads, I think. Uh, so this one wasn't too bad. Oh, geez, Sean did this blue V3, which has pockets, the ones with holes in them. And personally, I like pockets because I can fit usually one more finger than is intended because my hands are so small. Also, every time I see or think of pockets, I think of the TikTok sound that goes like, this dress has pockets, pockets, pockets. Um, anyway, this route is pretty cool. As a side note, I think climbing has marginally helped my cubing ability. In climbing, you do have to use your fingers and forearms a lot, which are the same muscles you use to turn a cube. And I think it's made it so that I can solve for longer and my wrists don't hurt as much as they used to. And then I found this blue V3 that I really liked because it was sort of pressy, sort of on the shoulders. You can see I'm pushing up with my shoulder here. And <laughs> my arm also hyperextends, so you can see that from the video. But nice. this one, I didn't really plan much when I got on the wall, so I'm speeding up some parts because I'm trying to figure out what to do. This part I thought felt pretty cool. And then for the final lean, inching my foot up. And in climbing, you only nice. have to get two hands on the final hold. You don't actually have to hold them. You can just get two fingers if you want. So that was a pretty cool one. And then I tried this one where you're supposed to launch yourself to the next blue hold, but I am scared of face planting, so I could not do that. 
John is so tall that he could almost just reach between the two holds where that was absolutely not possible for me. And one part about climbing is that you can try things that are completely out of your range, which is pretty funny sometimes. And then I found this purple V4 that looked really cool. It basically has one move in it. You get on this big blobby thingy and then you try to stand up and get two hands on the top. And I was able to get into the position where I could get one leg on it. But from here, I think you basically have to do a pistol squat. And after this, I realized I can only pistol squat in my right leg, not my left, so I got stuck. I also found this purple V3 that I really liked. I think, uh, in general, I like moves that you have to push with your shoulders, because relatively speaking, my shoulders are pretty strong. My arms are not, though. I still cannot do a pull-up. I think I need to start working on that. But this move is pretty cool, where you have to push up with your arm and your leg at the same time. And one thing for this one is that I think the intention is that once you get into this position, most people can just reach up for the final hold. However, as you can see, I am quite a few inches short. So this um, little extension on the wall came off the wall a little bit. So I was putting basically my fingernails underneath to pry myself up. And it hurt a little bit, but I was able to get to the top. So when you're short, you have to figure out different ways around it. But I really like this one. I thought it was a very interesting move. Really? Thanks. We climbed a bit more and then we waited outside for our Uber. For dinner, we ended up going to the hotel restaurant and it was actually really good. I was very, very much craving burgers and fries, which is what they had. And I also got a milkshake. Absolutely delicious. And nachos for the table. It is Sunday, so it is day four of US Nationals 2023. Um, I haven't been the best at getting vlog clips because I've been, I feel like, almost a little bit shy to record stuff or just forgetting to record things. But Brandon and Keaton are already at the venue. I think Brandon had four blind at eight o'clock. I was not going to wake up for that, um, but I'm headed to the venue soon. I'm really excited. A lot of really cool events today. I think for me, I just have 3x3 and 5x5 today. Hopefully, I'll get some cool footage and I'll be on stream again a few times today. I'm really excited because a lot of the top solvers in the world are going to be solving today, and uh, I'll bring you guys along for the ride. And then I proceeded to do the worst 3x3 average that I've done in a very long time. I mostly attribute it to the fact that it was around 9 o'clock, which is pretty early for me. The previous round was after lunch, so also at this point in the average, I had not had anything to eat, so I was hungry and a bit tired. Unfortunately, that means I didn't make 3x3 semifinals, but it happens. Minimum that we'd be expecting from him, let alone, um, let alone anything uh, slower than that. So, uh, this really- he needs first, huh? Phone <laughs> always needs first. And then we got some cool group photos, like this no girls allowed photo and this DMV delegates picture, which I'm an honorary member of. What are my four finals? After lunch on the fourth day, all of the finals were underway. So here's a clip from Tuba Do Finals where Max Shao gets a 0.8. I think one of the scrambles was pretty easy. I saw a lot of sub ones on this one. The US national champion is Zane Kanani, and he actually had to compete with a bloody finger because he pinched it on the chairs in sitting down, which was pretty impressive. Not not the pinching part, the winning with the pinching part. And after that was one-handed finals, which Keaton made into, so we were pretty excited about that. 15. In one-handed finals, Max was sitting next to Patrick, Patrick who's on the streaming stage. Uh, Max was able to win, but Patrick actually did tie his world record average in a previous round. Unfortunately, starting with the DNF, so probably not the best. Not probably. Definitely not the best start. And a random side comment, but I don't think I'm particularly slow by any means. I'm not, obviously, I'm not the fastest in the world. But my 3x3 on a bad day is about as bad as Max's decent one-handed on an average day, which is kind of insane to me. And Patrick did get this pretty cool 8. Also, side comment, I did get a one-handed PB single of 12 at this competition because I got a PLL skip. Very nice. After that was blindfolded finals, you're watching Tommy Cherry, who did win and is therefore the US national champion. I think blind is so interesting to watch because for me, I don't do blind at all. So I vaguely know how it works, but I don't do it. So the level of intrigue is completely different than when I'm watching someone really fast do, say, 3x3, because I know what they're doing. It's basically what I'm doing, but faster. But when I watch Blind, I feel like it's a completely different language almost. And Tommy is sitting next to Stanley here. Two other things I would like to point out about Blind is that you don't want to clap uh, when people do well, because that's very distracting. So instead, people do jazz hands, as you saw previously. Another thing is the world-class Blind solvers, they sort of yeet their head down to bring the blindfold down, which is a very interesting technique. 
And here's Tommy not being happy with a 17. I think the scrambles were pretty decent in this mean, and I heard that the last scramble actually had three solved corners, so he was going for probably world record mean. And after this was 3x3 finals, and while everyone was waiting around, I was able to get a picture with Max, with Patrick, and then wait as everything was being set up for 3x3 finals. The left is the trophy that's given to the winner, and the right one is a perpetual trophy where they add the name of the winner every year, and then it gets taken to the next championship. These are pretty cool. Staff sat on the floor for 3x3 finals, and you, could just, and you can see just how many people were watching 3x3 finals, which is insane. Also random, but Michael Nielsen has a wonderful stage presence. It was pretty funny and enjoyable to watch him solve. To get into finals, I think you needed a 6.99 or 6.97 average, which is kind of insane. But also keep in mind that these are some of the top cubers from well, around the world and around the country. And once you're in this place, I can't imagine what it feels like because there are hundreds if not thousands of people watching you from in front of you and behind you. And right before you solve and during your solve, the crowd is absolutely silent in anticipation. So I'm, it's just amazing to watch. I love watching finals. This is Curtis Chai, who I believe is 12 years old, which is kind of crazy to me because I started queuing over 13, around 14 years ago. So that just makes me feel old and slow. I think uh, in general, people are progressing faster than they used to, whether that be because of more resources or better hardware, mostly probably resources. It's just very interesting to me how so many of the top level cubers are so young. As a side note, Sun Hyuk, Hyuk Nam. Uh, his glasses just make me think of Harry Potter every time I see them. And also, I love watching him solve because his turning is so fluid. Uh, I think I recorded a couple more of his clips just because it's so fluid and smooth to watch. <laughs> Listen to how quiet the crowd is when the competitors are spectating and solving. And this is Kyle Santucci, who I believe got third place, so very impressive. <laughs> so this pairing was, I guess, the battle of the Maxes. Max Xiao is on the right on the red stage, and Max Park, who did end up winning and becoming US national champion, on the blue stage. And I'll keep uh, all of his solves in just so you can see how crazy fast they are. And starting with a 4 is absolutely insane. Again, remember the pressure and the number of people watching you. It's just amazing how he's able to solve so well consistently. <laughs> and his second solve is a counting 5 flat. This was just absolutely amazing to watch. And this is Max's worst solve of the average, which is better than my best solve of the competition, which just makes me feel old. <laughs> And, slow. and at this point in the average, he was guaranteed a sub-6 average. It was just more of a question of what kind of sub-6 average it was going to be. He's just so fast. Amazing. For the penultimate seed in the finals, it was Luke Garrett and Ben Zhao. And I thought it was very interesting that they got the exact same time on the first scramble. In the final seed was Luke Greiser and Matty Hurobo Anaba, who in the third round, I believe, got a 5.65 average, so just crazy fast. I also thought this was pretty funny. <laughs> and the 3x3 podium ended up being Max Park in first, Luke Garrett in second, and Kyle Santucci in third. Absolutely incredible solves from everybody. After this was awards, and I was able to get a pretty good vantage point and some pretty good shots of people going off the stage, onto the stage, so I'll just leave a couple of those in. They also called up the fastest female for each event, so this is Livia for what I'm assuming is Pure Minx, so that was pretty cool. Michael Nielsen won Pure Minx and uh, very fashionably went through the, the staff tunnel. And the female champion for the final event, 3x3, was Ava Kato. Very nice, and the audience has a nice little chant for it. Fuck! 
end of the competition. Woo! Oh, my voice is hoarse. Hi, horse. Hi, horse. I'm not horse. My voice is hoarse. <laughs> And just like that, after four long days, the competition was over. We took some pictures, and then we went to grab food. And then uh, Keaton had to leave early, but Brent and I went back to the hotel and left the morning after. So it's day five, which means we're leaving. I'm so tired. Yeah, Keaton left yesterday. We're both tired. It's like 6.15, which is about three hours before I normally wake up. I'm going to sleep on the plane. Me too. And I'll need it day. Me too. Bye. I feel like I'm always tired for comps, but it is what it is. And at the airport, Brian and I got there pretty early, so we were able to get into a lounge with our fancy priority passes. And on the way back, I also had a window seat right behind the wing, which is my favorite place to get shots from. And then I went back to my apartment, and here I am a week later after the competition. US Nationals 2023 was an absolute blast, although I do want to mention, I think the towels in the hotel messed up my skin. It's like... This is absolutely terrible. It's never this bad. If you're seeing this, first of all, thank you for sticking around to the absolute end. It also means I get to pat myself on the back because I've edited, edited and uploaded a full video, which I haven't done in quite a while. Regardless, I'll be going to the World Championships 2023 in Korea. I'm very, very excited. I'll make sure to vlog there as well and hopefully have a vlog up within a timely manner. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And if you got this far, comment your favorite Taylor Swift album in the comments.